We all know that business meetings are one of the leading aspects of wasting time for your employees. If you get 20 people in a one hour meeting that makes no sense, this automatically means 20 wasted hours for your organization. And most people are really quick to organize meetings. They schedule meetings for everything, they make it endless, they don't really plan for those meetings, which is really a no-no in the enterprise world. Which is why I took an excerpt of Paloma Cantero Gomez, which is a 30 under 30 influencer writing for Forbes. And she wrote a great guide on nine specific ways to work around tedious meetings or just avoid tedious meetings and essentially make sure that you don't jump on boring meetings itself. I'm going to walk through the main list and I'm going to add my comments there so that everyone can get the best out of both words and also share the link to the original story in the first place. Rule number one, make sure a meeting is 100% needed. We all know what this is about. Most of the time, meetings can be avoided. Meetings may not be urgent, meetings may not be a high priority, meetings may be organized asynchronously, not everyone may necessarily need to be in a meeting, or the meeting can actually be shorter if someone sums up what is the meeting all about in the first place. Number two, keep it as short as possible. There are different ways to organize meetings as stand-up meetings, for example, in rooms where you cannot easily sit down and open your laptop and start working for the next hour. If you have a stand-up meeting, this means that you need to be standing just as I am right now and really inclined to cancel the meeting as early as possible. Even otherwise, if you just add several meetings in a short span of time or if you organize a meeting, let's say 15 minutes before something else important, everyone should really wrap up within a very strict deadline instead of waiting for a whole full hour for a boring and inefficient meeting. Number three, focus on the goals and milestones and not the entire process behind. Most people extend meetings for a very specific reason. The CEO or a VP of something asks someone else, hey, hey, what would it take you to deliver this or land this client or accomplish this? And instead of discussing uh, the details afterwards, or instead of discussing uh, just a rough ballpark and then the details, the whole discussion expands for another 10 or 15 minutes, talking about, yeah, I need to talk to this guy, but then we like those resources, so we need to buy this and go to this warehouse and do this and do that and do that. So this is boring, this is uh, really stressful, this is actually impacting everyone else in the meeting. So talk about goals and milestones, don't talk about all the problems, just discuss all the problems afterwards and then sum it up for everyone to know what you have talked about. Number four, focus on the points that you believe can actually be agreed on. Now, this is a bit tricky, but it makes quite a lot of business sense if you think about it. There are specific points that nobody agrees about or you need a five hour meeting, which is never going to happen, of course, so it needs to happen over time. But there are some quick wins that you can start with and just set the foundations of everything needed. So start with those points first. This is going to ensure that your meeting has ended one way or another in a successful way for the end of the day, which is going to be super awesome for everyone else attending the meeting. And then it's going to be easier to just have the foundation available uh, so that when people are talking about the complex problems, you already have decided on what is the best way forward. Ask for practical examples of every single issue. Now I'm going to give an example of our world. When we are talking about estimates and someone comes in and says, yeah, this is going to take, let's say 80 hours, which is two full weeks. And we say, well, we believe this is going to take five to 10 hours. Why exactly do you think that it's going to take 80 hours? And second, if it's not going to take 80 hours, or if it is, what is the business impact that is going to justify paying for those 40 hours? Now, what this does is doing two things. First, it's adding context to the conversation so that everyone knows what we're talking about. And second, it is actually assessing the priority and the necessity and the severity of that particular problem. Because let's say if you have a, um, I don't know, an about page and you have a type on an about page, this is not the end of the world, but if you have a broken checkout page, this is a completely different problem. So just assessing priority and importance of each of those is super important while conducting your meeting. Number six, always stick to the facts. It's really easy to get emotion over a meeting. Emotions are not necessarily a bad thing. I believe that emotions are great because it means that people are passionate about the product, about the team, about the company, about what they do. Lack of emotions is what bothers me a lot more than emotions themselves. Which is why keeping and sticking to the facts is extremely important. Always try to use data. Don't try to be subjective. Don't try to just rely on emotions, on feelings, or on, on anything like that. Just use facts. Stick to guidelines, stick to best practices, stick to specifications, stick to everything that would be helpful to set some context and put 
a specific frame around whatever you're talking. Number seven, use clear deadlines. Clear deadlines are important for a very, very good reason. A lack of deadline means that something is going to drag for months, if not for years, and nobody is going to treat it as a priority. Deadlines are extremely important, which is why we are also treating our internal products at the company as first-class citizen projects. We are allocating time, we are allocating resources, we are allocating TM power, everything to make sure that they stick on track. We weren't used to be doing that for years, and this was dragging them for years, so I know firsthand how much of a problem it is when you don't use deadlines in your internal planning. Number eight, sum up with bullet points. Bullet points could be great because this is essentially what you wanna extract out of an entire conversation. If you have a minute of your meeting, this is great for details, but at the end of the day, you really wanna know what has everyone agreed on and what uh, does the team think that should be done before the next meeting, by the end of the quarter, and so forth. This is precisely why having bullet points as a summary is something that could really help you just move to the next level. So make sure you sum up every single conversation just as you would rather otherwise sum up a conference talk or any type of meeting. So number nine was actually the point on that list that made me put the entire list and then walk over it. Now, number nine is ask someone randomly to send an email. Now, I love it, I haven't done it previously, and I'm going to start doing that because this ensures that everyone on the meeting has been following through what everyone has discussed. Normally, there is someone appointed to take meeting minutes and to you know take notes and so forth and so forth. But asking someone, a random per person of the audience, to just gather all this know-how and just send it or you know just take notes in the middle of the meeting as well is something that can help you a lot. Now, this is slippery slope because sometimes just taking notes may be a time-consuming exercise and you know not everyone may be able to involve and engage in the conversation and so forth. But as a general rule of thumb, it's a great idea. Just say, hey John, uh, you're sitting out there in the corner. Make sure you send us an email of the meeting minutes by the end of the day. It's a great way to just make sure everyone is connected with the rest of the meeting. Uh, nobody's slacking, nobody's getting distracted and so forth. Just a great way to keep everyone on the same page.